So I have to say that uh, sticks excite my imagination. They always have. I started in early childhood playing around with uh, sticks and building forts. I probably forgot all of that uh, until I was uh, trying to take an art career and all of a sudden rediscovered that I I really like sticks and that I could um, perhaps build on some of the early feelings I had about them and that all children have actually and uh, decide to, you know maybe I could expand and build things with them. We all have a little bit of the shadow life of our hunting and gathering past and so it turns out that what really happens is with regard to sticks is that you always start doing something and then make up the reasons for it later. I happened to see on my way to um, Fresno a picture of the Great Wall of China and how it used the, hill, the hills to its advantage to give a kind of an aesthetic feel of like a snake or something rolling up and down the mountains and you read the top coping of the wall as it moves up and down there's a kind of a sensation that you get. So I thought maybe I would build a, a kind of a smaller wall here but that would also kind of translate the geography of the hill below it. Because I'm hoping that, you know, people will be compelled to go over and look in this thing. Uh, part of that is not put it, putting it too far from the sidewalk so that you could step off uh, on your way to class or because students are generally busy on their, on their uh, daily routines and so this would be not that far to go to step in and perhaps be captivated and moved. The name of this piece is, is the learning curve. And of course, uh, we all do have a learning curve with the world of sustainability and and uh, the natural world. We're relearning that we need the we need the natural world that we can't really feel that human unless we can go to the beach or stand in a forest or look into some water and just kind of reflect about our, who we are and and breathe with the other animals to a degree. And uh, this sculpture is kind of learning its place. You know, it's it's uh, trying out different aspects of the hill, and um, it's taken on its own learning curve. And of course, for us as the ma makers and my, myself and people that are helping me, we we are constantly uh, trying to figure out the nuance of of how to use a stick and how to use it well. The fact that we are I am able to use other folks to help me um, and do so fitfully has made a big difference in both the scale and that I can take on, and also you know, the um, more interest in the community because you have uh, people from that community helping you. And, you know, we only have uh, one kind of work here. There's no hierarchy. Those folks are doing the same work that I am. I'm good at it and I can fix anything so I can go around and tidy up. But generally the sticks that people put in are important sticks and we have them. Uh, we break down the job to this uh, small enough uh, parameters so that they understand what I need. Uh, having something that's made out of sticks, you know, it, uh, it's evocative. It brings you to the to uh, a walk you took along a river. It brings you to a deep forest. It, it brings you to childhood fantasies. It brings you to dreams that you've had about, you know, going out into the wilderness. You know, it brings to life. Uh, things you've read in novels about people being lost in the wilderness and and uh, people being found in the wilderness and people finding their way back to to uh, sanity by you know taking a walk and realizing how important uh, clean water and rivers and clean air and you know all of that is to us as we move into a technological age it's hard to remember that these this is the backbone of of our existence our life our need you know I'm constantly making minor changes and, and developing the piece uh, according to, you know, how it looks and what the material will do and how the volunteers are working and how they help me. And so it's, it's a kind of constant floating compromise amongst all of these factors that you're processing every day to try to push the work in a good direction, mold it in a good direction, you know, uh, help it out. Uh, develop it, uh, you know, make it more crucial, uh, you know, make it more intense. I hope that this sculpture kind of pushes forward the idea of creativity and, uh, you know, and also that, you know, that things don't have to be overthought to be good, that you can 
in fact come up with things on the spur of the moment that turn out to be compelling and interesting to people. Uh, when I think creativity, I think immediacy. I think, you know, thinking on your feet. I think problem solving, uh, you know. I think uh, trying to discover in materials or in ideas which way to go and, and form up a better idea because uh, you've just got the tendrils of, a, of some piece of an idea and you're going to develop that and it's going to become better and that's the creativity part of it. I do think there's a duality in, in that's required to build these works. They, you do have to be organized and there's a lot of preparation work and a lot of pre-work and, and a lot of observations that a person has to make about the site. So there, there's a, a way that you, you have to pre-plan and it, yet, you know, at the time of building you have to be, you know, have to free your mind and let yourself, you know, to make, I think, a successful piece. It's got to live. It's got to have a life of its own. You have to unleash your idea and see where it goes. got the first material from around my house and started working with it on my picnic table and and so it was part and parcel of my envelope uh, but then I realized that sticks are part of the biggest envelope and people have a lot of reactions to them and they're very imaginative objects they they belong somewhere in our imagination in every imagination